All right. So we last left off. We had just created a hit test collision with our hero and our block. Just to make sure that works, I'm going to run it. And uh, this might be a little laggy just because I have a few windows open. Let's see if it works. Okay, we're going to go ahead and say that it's just laggy. So if I get into the code, go to my timeline. If it'll let me, there we go, timeline, actions. Go into my actions window. This might be a long video. Okay. So what I did previously is I went on to D2L and I downloaded all of the Word documents that are there and I opened them up. So right now we're saying that if we hit something, we're going to trace you hit something. All right, now I'm going to work through the code for part four. And in part four, we're saying that, okay, we have two additional functions. We have clicked and we have a function called unclicked. So I'm going to copy those into my uh, code. So command C and back into flash, right where I have my uh, add event listener main loop. I'm going to put it before just because I'm going to have my other functions before establishing my booleans. Okay, so right up here, I'm just going to paste it in. It's okay, so I have a function click and a function unclick. That means that when I define them, I have to define them up here before my main loop. Luckily, it is already defined for us. So I'm going to select my clicked function and my unclicked function. Make sure I have my open and close and my open and close. All right, so I'm going to copy those, command C, go back into my flash, and above here, I'm going to make a little bit of space, command V and paste it down. Now, the one thing that it says is mouse is down equals true. So because I don't actually have anything called mouse is down, I have to create myself a variable. So above your event listeners, and it doesn't have to be there, it could be anywhere as long as it's not in a function. I just like to keep things nice and neat. I'm going to have a variable called var. Mouse is down. Spelled exactly like the way it is in the function. Okay, I'm just following the same naming convention, lowercase, uppercase, uppercase. And I'm going to set that to false. So automatically the computer knows that the, com that the mouse is going to be down or not. Now that's the beauty thing about a boolean, is a boolean is only true or false. It can't be anything else, which is great. Now the second part is in our main loop. If we're establishing that the mouse is down, we are now going to take off the uh, mouse Y component so that we can say it's going to move up or down by 10 pixels. So I'm going to say if mouse is down, do the following. Move it down by 10. Otherwise, if it's up, make it positive. I said that wrong. Negative means moving up. Positive means moving down. Okay. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to make sure that I put it before my variable statement, my for var, my i. Oh, I think I just pasted it in here. Command Z. Okay. And the other thing that you'll notice is I commented out my player.y. So we'll go back into my flash, find player.y. I'm just going to double, oh, not those guys. Double backslash, commenting him out. Make a little bit of space. Command V. And I'm just going to uh, click on this auto format code so everything looks nice and bumped over. But it's saying it's not going to because I have some comments in there. That's all right. Okay. Now let me check back with my code. Did I miss anything? Nope. Mouse is down, mouse is down, variable. Okay, so, so far so good. If I run my code, I'm hoping there are no errors. Let's take a look, see. Same thing's gonna happen. You hit something. Okay. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of my code. And after I get hit, I'm going to comment out my remove event listener. So that way I can see what's going on. Function clicked, function clicked, function unclicked. Okay, so I have two of these. Why do I have two of them? Probably because when I copy it into my um, other guy, something happened. Okay, so I have my two functions, which aren't going to be in my main loop. Delete. Function clicked, function unclicked. Okay, I know what happened. When I copied my if statement, it didn't take. So it was just pasting my previous stuff anyways. So I'll try this again. Command C. Come back in here. Sorry, guys. Okay, inside my main loop, as long as I'm within my curly brace, I will paste it. If. There we go. If mouse is down is true, which when I click it will be. Otherwise, it's not true, so I'm not going down. And I click, and I come up. Oh, I hit something. And this is just me clicking. And every time I release, he'll drop. Okay, so far so good. Now we can go to part five. All right, so that was part four. I'm going to close out of here. And let's go to part five. Part six, part five. Okay, so in part five, what we did is we changed um, one thing. We made a variable called velocity. And we said if velocity is smaller than 10, so if it's going faster than negative 10, going upwards, then we're going to set it to negative 10. Otherwise, if it's going downwards, stop it at positive 10. Then we're adding an increment of velocity of 0 0.5. So that way, every time we move um, our character, he starts at 0 from up here. We are going to make him go progressively faster up to a max speed of 10 pixels per click. Or per loop, let me say it that way. Okay, so I'm going to first, yes, I want to save. Okay, first thing I want to do to make things a little easy is I'm going to make myself another variable. Var velocity equals zero, semicolon. Okay, save that. Great. Now when I come into my code, what I can do is I'm going to go into my if mouse is down code where I have my minus equals 10. I'm going to change that to minus equals velocity. So I'm going to take everything that's inside of my if statement Copy that, come back into my code, I'm inside of my if statement, and I'm going to take this guy out, paste the other bits of my code, so now I'm saying, okay, if my mouse is down, I'm going to go down to negative 10, but I'm going to limit it by 10 pixels if he goes beyond. Then here I'm just saying, move my player by velocity, so right now he's not actually moving. He's not, he's just going to stand still. Then I have else, command copy, come into here, delete that guy, command paste. Okay, so far so good. Now the most important line is right here. Between my for statement and my last curly brace from my else statement, I'm going to increase my velocity by something. So. I have my for statement, I have my curly brace, so anywhere in here, I'm going to say velocity, velocity, yeah, plus equals 1. So now he's going to go up by 1 increment. He's going to start at 0. Where's my zero? He's going to start at 0, and the first time he goes through the loop, nothing's going to happen. But as soon as he's done the loop, he'll be now at 1. Second loop, he'll be at 2. Third loop, he'll be at 3. And when he becomes uh, 10, instead of going to 11, he'll stop at 10. When I deselect, and he goes down, I go 
negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, but when he gets to negative 10, instead of going to negative 11, he will stop at negative 10. And this is where you can add and change up your, your code, if you like, to make it more personalized. All right, I do believe that is part five. Close out of here. Make sure I save my work. All right, part six and seven, a little bit different. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create myself an explosion. So there's no actual explosion in the code because it's all code. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my, uh, my flash. Main timeline, I'm going to go insert, new symbol. I'm going to call it boom, just for the uh, sake of my code. Export for action script, thereby creating a class of boom. All right, great. Yes, that's exactly what we want. All right, so in my boom timeline, I'm going to draw myself a nice little boom. So right now I'm just going to make it nice and black so that you guys can see what's, uh, well, I guess my color is green. Okay, select that and make that nice and small. And then the next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to center it. Let's go up to 300. If it'll let me. Okay, right now our hero character is right on this plus sign. So as soon as my computer stops thinking, I'm going to move my boom to my, there we go. Come on, little guy, you can do it. Come on, give me something. Okay, I'll have to just do the old-fashioned way. Command plus. There we go. Actually, that's not too bad. Command minus. All right, now I'm going to make some sort of animation. I'll say 20 frames is good enough for me. So I'll go F6. I will select him again, and I'll make him bigger. There we go. So that way I know that my animation is going to start from here, and it's going to grow and still be relatively centered. Now in order to make this change, the one thing I need is a tween. So right click anywhere in between my two keyframes, create shape tween, and there we go. All right, so as soon as we call on this animation to play, one thing we have to do is we have to create ourselves a code for this. So I'm going to call this guy action script. Actually, code is faster. All right, now I'm going to put a blank keyframe on my last frame here, blank keyframe, because action script can only go on keyframes. If you create a boom and your code doesn't actually work, it's because you don't have a keyframe on your last frame here and it'll automatically bump it back to this first guy. So I'll go back into my actions, window, actions. I'm gonna type in stop, meaning at the end of its uh, playhead, so it's only gonna play it once, I'm going to say if, open bracket, parent, open curly brace, close curly brace, right in here. Um, Let's see, do I have it in here, 6-7? I should have it in here. Might be a little quicker just to copy and paste it. Okay, block code. There's a block code, boom code, stop. If parent movie clip, there we go. Command copy. That's the beauty of uh, Flash Project 6-7. It has three different pieces of code in it. Delete, command, paste. There we go. Okay, so my boom's already there. That's fabulous. Now I'm going to go back into my main timeline. Scene one, main timeline. Actions. Okay, so now when we hit something, instead of saying 
you hit something in our trace statement, we're going to move something around. So right in here. Okay. I'm going to find my code again. And I have to go back up to my... There we go. Aha! Hit test. Okay, so var explosion, new boom. So I'm going to copy this guy all the way up to add child because we're taking out our trace statement which is hit registered or you got hit and I already took out my remove child player so that way I can keep getting hit all the time so I'm going to copy that come back into here and anywhere between my two curly braces oh where I got where I have my uh, trace statement I'm going to paste that in so I'm creating a variable called explosion. I'm going to call it new boom because boom right here, as you can see, is my linkage name. So I'm saying make a container called explosion and inside that container put my animation of boom. Then I'm saying take the X and Y components of it and attach it to the same X and Y components of my player. Now all I have to do is go to my add child. So it'll play once, stop, and then it'll remove itself from this world because in our code that is what we selected so I will show you real here real quick go into my boom if it decides to load okay I might not show you but if you look at the code in here you'll notice that it said Come on, scroll. There we go. Uh, these Mac mice aren't really helpful. Movie clip parent dot remove child this. So anytime I am in my movie clip that's a parent, so scene one, I'm going to remove this child, which is the boom, after it is played. So it's going to play, it's going to stop, and then it's going to remove it because it's not in its own timeline. Great. So now that we have that, one more piece of code we're going to do, and that's part eight, which is, I'm just going to close this guy out. There we go. Part eight, which is uh, making ourselves a nice little boundary. So on my main timeline, I'm going to draw myself a boundary. There we go, nice and rectangular. You can always animate it later, but I'm on the clock here. Right click, convert to symbol make this a boundary and I'm just using the name boundary so that nice and simple the class is boundary okay okay it's gonna create a class for us and then boom there we go right there all right so I'm just gonna copy this guy and bring it out here so now just like that I have two boundaries yay all right coming back into my code window actions Okay, now it says when you see the following code, make the changes in red. So I'm going to look here where it says if get child at i is a block, and I'm going to add or get child at i is a boundary. All right, so if get child at i is block, come within my brackets, or that's two vertical lines, it's right below the delete key, you have to hit shift to get to it, or get child, oh, that's a G, get child at i bracket is boundary okay so I'm saying if it's a block or a boundary I'm now gonna say that my container b my variable isn't gonna be a block anymore I'm gonna say treat as a movie clip which they are so now I'm gonna have my explosion and I'm gonna say okay create it anytime I hit my block or my boundary I close out of my actions. Mr. Rounding, please call the office. Mr. Rounding. I'm going to save. And if I run it, hopefully it won't error on me just because of the lag. Yay. So every time I hit something, an explosion. You can't see it on the top side only because where my zero, 0 is, it's actually exceeding it. 
But if I change my, uh, my coordinates to hit the center portion, it'll be all good. All right, so now you're all caught up. What we can do to uh, modify this is if we go into our action script one last time. Now we can say, all right, where we took off the remove event listener, we can add it back on. So now it's not going to listen for the main loop anymore. And since it's not going to listen to the main loop anymore, I could actually say remove child bracket player underscore mc close bracket semicolon. So that way, I'm just going to save that. Command return. After I get hit once, I disappear. Great. Now all I'll have to do is send it to a game over screen. And that is the last piece of code for our uh, action script tutorial today. The last piece that we could potentially do is add a score. Now because the score is just a text uh, variable, I think I might just include that in a uh, text form tutorial on D2L. So hopefully you guys were able to keep up and um, the uh, Word documents are on D2L for you. If you have any questions, you can come and see me. But it's been over 20 minutes, so let's post this guy and uh, get to work. All right, guys. Talk to you later.